Are you using prayer to get closer with God? In this video, you'll learn how to get closer with God using prayer and develop intimacy to increase your relationship with Him. Hi, I'm Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries here with another lesson from our Driveway Discipleship Program, empowering you to be a better follower of Jesus in just 10 minutes a day. Let's dive in. Are you using prayer to get closer to God? Prayer is communication with God. It's you talking with Him and Him talking with you. In this lesson, we'll look at four different types of prayer using the acrostic ACTS, A-C-T-S. A stands for adoration. C stands for confession. T stands for thanks. And S stands for supplication. But first, answer these questions. Are you using prayer to get closer to God? Is building your relationship with God your primary goal? It should be. All prayer should develop intimacy with God. Why? Because prayer that increases intimacy with God is the hallmark behavior of the Christian life. The reason is this. The gospel is the foundation of our entire faith. Every behavior we do, including every prayer, should be like bricks that are laid on top of the foundation of the gospel. Because of the gospel, we have a restored relationship with God. We have been forgiven of all of our sins, and we have direct access to confidently and boldly approach God with our requests. Because of the gospel, God the Father adopted us in Christ, and now he's forever our heavenly Father. Because of the gospel, his spirit now lives inside of us and should be directing our thoughts, our desires, and our requests. All of your interaction with God should be in light of your trust in these gospel truths. If you're talking to him as though he's far away in heaven, having to go through other intermediaries or asking him to come down to you, it's as though you don't trust his word and promises that he's already living in you. If you pray to God in such a way as though the gospel wasn't true, then your lack of faith will hinder your prayer, relationship, and intimacy with him. You see, our conversations with God should reflect that we do trust in his word and his promises. Our prayers should be fueled by our knowledge and love of him, our ongoing desire to please and glorify him, and the goal of deepening and strengthening our relationship with him. See, all this will change why and for what and how we talk to him. There's a problem if you're praying in a way that makes you less close to God, less connected to his heart, less about his glory, less like Jesus, or less led by his spirit. In regards to our desires, James 4.3 says, You ask and do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Our prayers must glorify God. In Matthew 6.33, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. In Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
When it comes to getting our prayers answered, 1 John 3, verses 21 and 22 says, We have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. Guided by right motivations, let's now look at four types of prayer modeled by Jesus in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 and Luke chapter 11. Adoration. Adoration is telling God how much we adore Him. This type of prayer is about giving honor and glory to God for who He is. He alone is God, creator and sustainer of the universe. He alone is worthy of praise. He's the painter, and the rest of creation, including us, are his painting. Everything exists to bring him glory, and everything that doesn't bring him glory by its existence will inevitably bring him glory by its destruction. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, verses 9 through 10, begins saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed, meaning honored, sanctified, or holy, be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Some manuscripts and traditions include, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. In Luke 19, verse 40, Jesus said, If humans didn't rejoice and praise God and Jesus as king, then the stones would cry out. See, the Holy Spirit is always speaking to us, glorifying the Father and Son as well. He opens and fills our hearts with admiration of God's wonder. Through worship, we then give it back. Confession. In John 16, 8, Jesus said, He, referring to the Holy Spirit, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. He speaks to us by showing us our sinfulness, not to tear us down, but rather to build us up. He leads us to repentance. He leads us continually to seek the Father and Jesus, to trust the gospel, and to believe our sins are forgiven through Jesus' atonement. He leads us to pursue justice, righteousness, holiness, and godliness. Confession is our response where we come into agreement with God, acknowledging our sins and our failures before him in humility. 1 John 1, verses 8 and 9 say, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Also, confession and forgiveness go hand in hand. Jesus says in Matthew 6, 12 to pray, Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And in Luke 11, verse 4, Forgive us our sins, For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Thanksgiving. This type of prayer is about thanking God for all that he has done and is doing. See, the Christian heart should be overflowing with gratitude. The amazing grace of God, the joy of having been forgiven of our sin, our adoption by God, our ongoing relationship with Him, the fruit of the Holy Spirit's presence, answering prayers, deliverance, healing, personal sanctification and transformation, spiritual, relational, and material blessings. 
All these things are things that we should express gratitude for. The Holy Spirit speaks to us in this way as well. He's always reminding us of what God has already done, is currently doing, and has promised to do, all flooding our hearts with appreciation, with gratitude, and love to give back. Lastly, supplication. This type of prayer is asking God for what we want, making our needs known to him as a personal request. James 4.2 says, You do not have because you do not ask. Philippians 4.6 says, In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Requests should be godly according to his word, and bring him glory to grant them. They shouldn't be greedy, selfish, or driven by sinful or worldly passions. They need to be asked humbly and earnestly. Jesus' example in Matthew 6, 11 and verse 13 says, Give us this day our daily bread and Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, or the evil one. Each one of the four acts, the ACTS types of prayers, is a communication with God and should be used to develop our intimacy with Him. Let's pray. Father, Speak always to me by your spirit in me. Help me to seek you first and get better at hearing you speak throughout the day. Help me develop an active prayer life in Jesus' name. Amen. I encourage you to start praying this way today. Remember the acronym ACTS. Adoration, express your adoring. Confession, confess your sins. T, thanksgiving. And S, supplication. Let your godly requests be made known to God. Get started today. If you would like a free two-page PDF copy of this lesson and a couple of action tips to get started, all you have to do is click the link below or go and visit our website at empoweredchristian.org forward slash driveway dash discipleship. If you like this video, please like it and share it with someone. And be sure to come back tomorrow for another lesson. As always, be empowered and go advance the kingdom of God today. God bless.